Welcome to episode three, Ron Klein, or as I've known him for years, Ronnie Klein. This episode centers around a childhood friend of mine that got his start in racing on his big wheel in my parents' driveway. I've known Ronnie from the time his parents brought him home from Grandview Hospital. As kids, we used to hang out daily, racing big wheels, bicycles, go-karts, mini bikes, HO slot cars, and competing in all the stick and ball sports. Ronnie, and he freely admits this, is one of the most competitive people I have known. Ronnie has had many victories and even is a past champion at Grandview Speedway in the late model ranks. He is currently running in the modified division at Grandview and took some time this past week to join me for 10 questions and a slot car time trial. Ronnie is a dirt star to me for his success on the track and for keeping those competitive juices burning all these years. When you are at Grandview Speedway, or possibly Bridgeport Speedway, look out for the number three of Ron Klein. Here it is, Dirt Stars and Slot Cars, episode three, Ronnie Klein. All right, Ron, how many years have you been racing? Well, I started in 89, so I guess it's 30, 32 years, 31 years, something like that. Okay. Something like that. That's close enough for my math. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm big on just numbers and stuff. Your first car number, any significance to it? You know, I went with the first car number was 27. And I just did it because at that time, at that age, I kind of was a Cale Yarborough fan. I liked the 27 Valvoline car. And, um, but had it for two years. And then changed it a three, but no real significance. Just like the number. Okay. Um, and your current number. The three is a weird one. <clears throat> I always liked Dale Earnhardt. Was kind of a Dale Earnhardt fan. But as you can remember, the Smiths lived up the street my whole life. Um, and remember when DB Smith bought the car from Tom Terry, which was a number three. Mm -hmm. Well, ironically. I ended up as that being my first car. Um, that car that Dennis had gotten from Tom Terry, it was altered and changed, but that's the car I ended up with, an old dinosaur. Uh, so I thought between the two, Tom Terry originally being three, who ironically just died. Oh, I, um, I wasn't aware of that. Yep, he just, it was just in the paper. Uh, between that and Earnhardt, I started running the three, and that's been there ever since. Okay, great. Full-time, part-time deal for you, racing? Oh, this is just part-time, yeah. It's, they call it a hobby. It's an awfully expensive hobby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and how about your career highlight? What would you say ranks up there for you? I think the 40-lapper wins probably the most, the Firecracker 40 wins. Um, winning the only 50th anniversary race was pretty neat, too. But... It's hard to say. Winning the winning the Chili 100 with a Grandview late model against super late models with open engines and open tires that was pretty neat. Winning a hundred lapper. Uh, yeah, and always had. There's a little part of me of winning a winning two races at Williams Grove with a late model. Uh, stand on the front stretch there and see all the names up on the top and it just to win there was neat. There were regular features, but it was neat to win. There. I'd still say the 40 lapper though. <laughs> okay, great. And then I go the other end. How about a, a low light or, or a tough time in your career that that you bounced back from it, that you learned something from it? You know what? I, people don't realize how many low points there are in racing. The weekly struggle, the broken stuff, the I, I wish it would held together two more laps kind of thing. Uh, that happens so often. The ratio of bad things happening to having one good night, it's hard to pick one, but the constant, and I think anybody that races will tell you that, to pick yourself up and go back next week and try again, and maybe this is the week, maybe this is the week, that's pretty much, that's the low points. It's the daily struggle to it. Okay. 
And then um, I, I throw this one in just to make it a little more personal. You marry, you single. Yep, married, Lisa and a wife. Uh, been married uh, 14, 15 years now. But she's all part of it. Comes to the track every week. Feeds the guys. <laughs> Great. Gets everybody busy. Great. It's good you have that kind of support. Um, this one I think is important to, to, for people to hear too. What kind of advice do you have to anyone that wants to get into racing? Well, the first thing I'd say is if you want to get into this, if you're not already helping somebody, the best thing you do is help somebody on a car for, for at least a year. Get, get an idea of what's going on. There is so much technical stuff in these cars and so much going on to come into it blind, you're, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, the other thing I would say is so many times people, I got a frame and a body, I'm going to build a race car. No, you're not. You're going to get halfway through it and you're going to be out of money and not realize what happened. Save your money, help somebody, buy one race ready, as race ready as you can get it. You don't realize when you're putting these together how many small parts there are, hoses and fittings and to buy one race ready, bring it home, take it apart, learn how to put it back together again, you got everything. Then as you break it, you buy parts and you get different stuff. But the biggest mistake I see them make is they're going to build it out of parts and buy this piece and that piece and they don't know what they're buying or they don't know what they're doing. Buy one race ready. If you can buy one that just came off the track that's for sale, throw money at them and take it home with you, that's the best way to do it. But Buy one as close to ready as you can. All right, great advice. Near dear to my heart, have you ever raced slot cars? <laughs> That's now, I'm not I... talking the HO track that we had as no, kids. No, 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 no. That we raced on. I used to race every Friday night, I think from the time I was 12 to 16 up at Stalls in Pennsburg. Used to race the Womp Womps up there, but on Friday nights that was where it all started. And I still got the car out in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> I still have my little box I used to carry with the cars in. Oh, great, great. Um, and then the last thing I have is your upcoming race schedule and then any sp sponsors you want to mention uh, that you want to give a yeah. shout out to. At this point, pretty much Grand View. Um, I'm not a big fan of, especially with owning my own plumbing business, to get out and to go Friday nights to Big Diamond, stuff like that. I hate traveling. If I liked traveling, I would have kept running a late model and went to Central Pennsylvania. Uh, Grammy's too close, and when in Rome, you do as the Romans do, and you get it modified. <clears throat> this is pretty much all they like there. So, uh, I'd like to try Bridgeport once, but haven't been down there yet. We'll see what goes on. Just All right. How about your sponsors? You want to? Uh, yeah, I got some good ones. I mean, TFC, uh, Titanium Finishing Company, they help out a lot. Uh, Frazier with Tree Man, <coughs> Tree Service, uh, Kendall Reinfurt Plumbing, RCR Plumbing. It's a whole bunch of us that we all work together at one company and left to start their own businesses and they all kind of helped me. There's four or five of the plumbing companies, Ben Leatherman, uh, Bikes, HVAC service. It's like the group, you know, it's just the guys that all left left there together. But, uh, but for the most part, I fund it myself. Okay, Yeah. great. Well, here's the exciting part now. <laughs> We're gonna go out and race some slot cars. Oh boy. You ready? It's been a few years. <laughs> oh, I already spun out. Ah. Spun out again. <laughs> Man, I missed the brushes up. <laughs> All right. So, your time, 18. 88, fast time of 218, 218. you're number one. Yeah. Thanks again, Ron. Yep. I appreciate it. Thanks again to Ronnie for welcoming me and my crew into his workshop. 
I would also like to thank my wife and kids for all the help that they give me to make these episodes happen. Please remember to like and comment on the video and subscribe to the channel. If you are a dirt star and would like to have a crack at setting fast time, contact me and I will come to you. Come back next time for episode four. See you then.